Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Linux edition. Of course, these are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, participate in the chat, see the in-betweens. And hey, every now and again, we actually cut an article out of the original. I might think it's too spicy. Um, but anyway, you can catch all that kind of stuff live if you catch it there. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the news. I just picked out uh, four interesting articles for the week. The first is we have uh, FWUPD. This is the software that allows you to do firmware updates is now allowing you to record devices for emulation. I'm like, what in the hell does that mean, right? And so digging into it a little bit more, um, when you're working with emulation, you can uh, set various devices as if you're running it. And, and I, I mean, I did this, had to do this when I was building a VM for Windows 98, right? You have to go in and emulate a sound blaster or something and then install the drivers directly from that. You just hunt through what can you find a driver for that doesn't look like a virus and, uh, you know, <laughs> spoof the system. Well, this uh, software is now in the latest version, 201, is going to allow you to actually uh, do that, and it's going to speed up some testing as you can test firmware changes in emulation prior to actually making the changes in real hardware or for the purpose of various testing. There's a few other um, other improvements as well, but the biggest one is that principle allowing you to, to do that. Uh, we do also have some, some Wacom device uh, buffer changes, just a few other things, but this is a nice piece of software that allows you to uh, fix firmware software on, on various, um, various pieces of hardware you might have in your device. So Linux is moving in a good general direction in that respect. Uh, next up, Google is preparing to let you run Linux apps on Android, just like in Chrome OS. So they are working on a uh, predefined virtualization system. This is all going to be based on Debian Linux. Now, there is a software that allowed you to install a Linux terminal, but you would have to configure the Linux VM yourself. And it was a little bit harder to handle everything. Uh, in this case, what they're doing with it is they're changing the application so that when you install it, it's going to set up and configure figure a Debian um, VM inside of your Android. So you basically have your Android running. And then on top of that, you have a virtual machine running, uh, running Debian. And then you're able now to do anything inside that machine that you could do on Debian. So this is effectively bringing Wagroid is what I have the most experience with on Linux, you know, allowing you to run Android apps uh, inside of the container on Fedora, for example, hey, you're basically reversing that. Now you're running full Linux apps through a virtual machine on side of Android. And so it's actually a really cool thing, a really cool feature. So it'll be interesting to see how that's working when it's done. Of course, if you need Google Play Store, I'm not going to be doing it on my phone, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, it is definitely an option here. This is going to be added into the developer's menu. So of course, you got to go down to the build number inside of your system settings. Click on that, I think, seven times. Enable the developer options. And then inside of that, you'll find the Linux terminal under that. And that will allow you, once you get into there, it will work with an, uh, a pre-configured Debian VM. And then you can get in there and run anything you want inside of that Debian VM. So that's actually really cool features in there to see uh, what they have. Here's a, uh, there's a demo there of what that would look like. Let's, in case there's any noise, let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, but here they're just uh, going in and launching the installer there. Then you need to go down here into your developer options. Again, developer options is only there once you enable it. Go into the terminal. That'll make the app appear in the list. And now when you are into the terminal, then you'll be able to get in there and run any type of Linux stuff. So I'm curious, you know, can I run full-fledged Linux software? I'll have to play around with that a little bit. But there you go. You can see they're running some Linux stuff, getting a couple errors there on the screen. You know, hopefully that's not running suicide Linux in there or something, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's actually a really cool feature coming um, for the Linux enthusiasts. Of course, I still need to test it. I downloaded it. I just haven't got a chance to test it out yet. I want to test out uh, the new post-market OS and the Pine phone with Plasma 6.2 or Plasma 6. I want to see how it works. 
All right. Uh, Clonezilla has a new update. So they have some major enhancements and bug fixes. This is based on, what was it, August? Um, uh, July. July SID repository. So Clonezilla is based on SID. And then they'll take a, a freeze a snapshot of SID, and then that'll be for that release. The biggest function here is the Linux kernel 6.11. Uh, the Linux kernel 6.11, it's not mentioned in this particular article, but Linux kernel 6.11 has all of the drivers and whatnot needed for the latest version of AMD processors that are not even out yet. So if you have a latest and greatest AMD processor, you would not be able to use the older Clonezilla because of the older kernel. But in this case here, 6.11 is going to allow you to run AMD into the foreseeable future as the next batch of AMD processors are already enabled for the Linux 6.11 kernel kernel. Uh, other than that, there's just a, a few other changes. They, um, the wireless tools package has been removed because it's no longer in the Debian packages. They replaced it with IW, which offers similar configurations. They've also removed riser for progs. I have no idea what that application is doing, but they said, hey, it's not really useful for a live setup. So um, they do uh, have some extra things in here allowing you to uh, have a, a better file transfer, particularly for NTFS systems. And Let's see, last week you mentioned the merging of ZSTD, a lossless data compression algorithm, with ZSD DMT utils, which uh, this change is a default now commands. Uh, the command is use ZSTD T0. And I have no idea why Zebras are getting STDs, but <clears throat> what can you believe, right? You know, anyway. Uh, but uh, bad joke, I know, I know. So there's uh, some cool things if you are using Clonezilla, particularly if you have latest hardware, this might be a good improvement for you. Then our last article for today is the Snapdragon X, uh, X1 processor. Uh, this is the new one coming out with all those Copilot Plus PCs and all sorts of other uh, fancy dancy stuff. Well, the problem is we don't really have Linux running for all these things yet, but uh, Ubuntu is actually getting really close. So we have a... Um, we have a developer preview for Ubuntu 2410, so we know Ubuntu may not be the the preferred distro for many of the people on my on my channel. But the fact that we are getting Ubuntu in here, giving us a distro available for this laptop, is a really really good thing. So if it comes down to running Copilot Plus PC with Windows uh, Recall enabled in the background or running Ubuntu, you better believe I'm going to be running Ubuntu, folks. <laughs> they ain't that evil. <laughs> Okay, um, but uh, it's really good that uh, we see them working on this. So there's uh, there's two Snapdragon uh, chips. There's the X, uh, X1E and there's an X, it's a 1S or something. I forget what the other one is. Uh, but uh, this one is specifically for the X1 Elites. And there's four of those different gen uh, chip types. I'm guessing that this should hopefully work for all four of those. Uh, but uh, that's actually good. We're getting a developer preview. And then they said they're going to use this as a goal, uh, like a starting base to get a generic ARM version of Ubuntu out. So I don't know, we might have to see how Snapdragon uh, might work with other distros that already have ARM availability like Debian, but eh, I don't know how it's going to work. But the fact that we have Ubuntu making uh, leaps towards this particular processor does indicate that they are using some of their resources in very positive ways, looking at the latest builds of PCs and how they are doing things. So that's good, uh, really good news coming out. So if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Locals page. You can join me over there, switch to linux.locals.com. Um, and uh, I should hopefully have a short story out for this month. I did actually sit down and write the outlines. I still have a few questions in my head about what we're going to do, and then hopefully I can knock it out in a couple days and get that up. But uh, this one's good be a good one. I um, I, I had this one sitting on my my notepad there for a little while. And I thought, let me let me figure out a story with this. So that when it's done, hopefully by the end of the month, will be posted over there on locals for you to uh, read or listen to. Of course, uh, we do have of course the Code Red book, which was based on last year's stories. Uh, that is actually now out. I will eventually get something over there for locals uh, for you guys to grab that uh, if you're a supporter over there. But you can jump on over there and see what's going on. So with that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.